artists and crafters, we have a problem. We like to hoard things and we love bargains. You never know when you're going to need it. And so when this, a $100 art supplies box, was being sold by Jazza, a YouTuber here on YouTube. Wow, redundancy. My Twitter and YouTube comments went crazy. So many of you brains wanted me to review this box in a very salty way. Am I scared? Yes. Am I a fan of Jazza? Yes. Will I or will I not be biased? The salt is never biased. For those of you who haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do. Otherwise, I will wave a sharp pointy thing at you. Don't make me do it. So make sure you click that button too. In all seriousness, for those of you who don't know Jazza, he is not a fun art channel. Instead, he's a channel that has fun with art. See what I did there? Clever. I did a collaboration with Jazza about two years ago. Holy moly, time flies. And if you don't know him, his channel is just such a pleasure to watch because he does all these different challenges, tests out new supplies, and just overall has fun with art in different ways. And sometimes he does things that you're like, huh, he really did do that with art, didn't he? And the answer is yes, he did. Salsa, this is uh, also a very chunky. I'm not entirely sure how practical it'll be, um, but... Sometimes I wonder what goes on in his mind because it's a little too close to my own brain, which is scary. Stop it! So this art box is a limited edition. It is not a subscription box. It is a one-time collector's edition, and it is only available until July 31st. So if it's something that you're interested in, I'll leave it in the description box below. Now, since so many people have already done a review of this, many of my other artsy friends, I wanted to take a very different twist on it. Since this box has already been extremely successful and sold out the first time, I figured I would compare the materials in here with their direct competitors. Of course, we're going to look at the value of the box itself as well. And so in the future, if Jazza does do another box like this, he'll get a different side of opinion on the different materials that even I, as an artist off the channel, do use. <sighs> yep. All right, enough delaying. Let's see what we get inside. Ooh, this is packed so nicely. All right, so the first thing we're greeted with is Jazza's mask face. This is really considerate because a lot of artists, I'm, me included, I know it sounds weird, we're introverts. So he's giving the opportunity for people who got this box who still want to take pictures with it to be able to put a mask. Plus one for thinking about people. Quick story, I got the box when it first came out. It got lost in the mail. Told Jezza, he resent it to me. But because of that, I don't get a note from him. But instead, he DM'd it to me. And he wrote, I'm not even gonna try the Australian accent because it'll probably end up turning British and then somewhat Indian and then slightly Arabic. I'm international. Dear Jackie, thanks for being so fun to collaborate with, which was two years ago. For those of you who don't know, make sure you check out that video. It was old school nerdy crafter. No more. She does not exist. Now we focus on the salt. I love how much you give to the art community and to me, literally. Teeny weeny art supplies and another art supply, which I sent to him while I was in Japan, which I will not tell you what it is because you're gonna see. He's, maybe he's gonna make a video on it, maybe not, and if he doesn't, I'll do it. It's a warning to you, buddy. Keep being awesome and thanks for all you do to the art community. All the best, Jazza. I did have the chance to meet Jazza while I was at VidCon and I do have to say he's as authentic in real life as he is in person. So that is, that was, that was very refreshing. All right, that's enough, that's enough. I want to do a little schmexy opening. Oh, you want me to remove the first layer? So the first thing we're greeted with is the mission statement. So basically on this note, it is the journey of putting this together, as well as how getting this box is supporting him in his journey. We get a little bookmark with jazz, 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 little mini, mini cartoon jazz. And a print of the art that he did with all the materials in this box. Just to kind of give you an idea of how much you can do with just these supplies. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this, but this box is really heavy. You know that it has been, it has been. Wow, English number one. It has been packed to the brim. Is that what it is in English? Let's assume it is. And so even though I just removed the first layer, you can see that it is absolutely packed. 
craft. So we're going to be removing each piece and going through them. Graphics fine liners that come in the sizes of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and a brush. That is great. I tend to stick around the 0.4 and smaller. So it's great that we get a brush. We also get a tumble brush. What's it called? What did he call it? What did you call it, Jezza? Tumble what? Dual brush pen in black. And as a fan of Japanese supplies, thank you. I love my Japanese supplies. Next, oh yes! Yes, yes, yes. This is what I've been waiting for. I have goosebumps right now just for Jezza. He has his own limited edition alcohol-based markers by Spectrum Noir that have his little jazzy Jezza self. So this is, he's, he's pretty spiffy and he's pretty smooth. This is the only time that it will be allowed for me to touch his face like this. That's kind of weird. Do you feel violated? <laughs> I'm really excited to try these because I am a huge fan of Copic markers. So I really want to make the comparison between these markers and Copic markers. So we're going to do a comparison of that later on. And what's interesting about this collection is that it does have a selection of colors that are directly chosen by Jazza. So he put these colors together to maximize your creativity and pretty much what you're able to do. And in the back, we still have his derpy little face over here. I'm not going to get tired of that derpy face. It's just it's so perfect. Yes! And then we have Faber-Castell. Why did I take this voice? I don't know. I have a set of Faber-Castell, but the thing is, I've actually never tried them. I've only used Prismacolors up until now. So this is the perfect occasion for me to compare Prismacolors and the Polychromos by Faber-Castell. So we're gonna do that in the video as well. Oh my god, this box does not end. We also have Expressit blending cards. Again, I've never used Expressit blending cards, so this paper is supposed to be great for blending. Up until now, I've only used Copic papers. Again, these, these are brands I am so used to, so I'm really curious to see the comparison. Okay, let's, let's go with the individual stuff. A mechanical pencil. I almost exclusively use mechanical pencils for drawing, so. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. <coughs> oh, salt, don't come out yet, not yet. I need you later. When I was shopping for Copic markers, I remember Jazza's video of beginning with Copic markers, and he did suggest a few colors. That's pretty much what I based myself when selecting my first ever markers. But then again, I ended up buying like 40 colors, so I completely disregarded his advice because I needed them all. What is that? What is this? Tambo Fudos... Fudonoski. Oh, okay, there's two tom... 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 tombos. I cannot talk. So there's two Tombow pens. One is water-based, and I'm not sure what the other one is. I guess we'll try them out. So these are this is a dual tip. I guess we'll try it out. Oh, I've always wanted to try these. We have a Prismacolor col 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 erase. I've seen so many artists do their outline with different colored pencils that are erasable. I've always seen them and be like, I want one of these, but I can't find them anywhere. Now I have my own. Very happy with this. I am so excited about this more than I probably should be. This is a white highlighting pen. Jackie, you're so basic. Don't judge me. Stop it. Stop it. This is a Signo white pen. And up until now, I've only used the Jer Jerry, 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 Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll. I can't talk. Help me, someone help me. So I'm going to be really curious to test the Jelly Roll versus the Signo pen. I've heard so many amazing things about this, but sometimes you've committed to one supply and you're like, well, I guess better the salt that I know than the sugar I don't. And then we have this really cute pencil case. The videos don't do it justice. So many people have reviewed and I've watched them review. Oh my God, there's even a little clip for the zipper. Look at that. How, how do I... don't understand why no one mentioned this. Why am I getting so excited about this? All right, so this adorable little pencil case has some pretty tight elastics. They are really, really tight. I mean, look at this. Upside down. It's holding stuff in place. So this is a really good one. I might actually replace the currently, the currently one I have. And then we have a dust-free eraser, which is always welcome because dust is everywhere. And last but not least, a sketchbook. I've seen so many of the people who've already reviewed this actually sketch inside it. So I will definitely be doing this. And since we're doing a comparison, I will be doing two pages side by side of a similar drawing with the different materials. We'll see what happens. And that, my brains, is everything in this box. So this box 
for now. Let's play. All right, so the first thing we're going to be swatching is the uh, Spectrum Noir Jazza Special Edition. And then I'm going to take the equivalents in Copic markers, test them in this notebook, a regular cardstock, their blending paper, and Copic paper, so that you can see the difference on four different surfaces. I don't want to open this because I always tear these things apart. <gasps> I did it. Ooh. And they're inside a container thing. Oh my god, my review self loves this organization. Look at that. Look at that. It, it, it wouldn't have fallen if I did if I had if I did this. If I'd done this. That's really cool. I am so entertained by the simplest things. I'm not throwing the box because this is precious. I'm gonna go over here. Since this is my first experience with Spectrum Noir, the first impression that I have is that it is pretty cool to hold. The he hexagonal shape. That's not hexagonal. Yes, it is hexagonal. It's also pretty light. On this version, they have the bullet nib, which is the nib that most of us are used to coloring when we're kids. And then we also have a brush nib, which is the thing that usually makes Copic markers very enjoyable to use. What I noticed is that there is no chisel tip. Thank the craft gods and art gods. Although chisel tips are pretty cool, I almost to never use them. So this is going to be interesting. And I just messed myself! And now we're going to be using this to make our little squares. And of course, I broke it. Like I said, I always do. Ooh. And just to be clear, practically everything in this box is a brand name. It's not something that you would have just picked up off of Wish, like holy, holy curtains, uh, alcohol-based markers. We have Spectrum Noir, which is a respectable brand. And Faber-Castell and Tombow. These are all brand names. We're not going fake here. Just is not all about that fake stuff. So the first thing I decided to do was make little rectangly squares with the fine liners, let them dry, and then make the color swatches of these Spectrum Noir markers. The reason I'm doing that is to see whether or not the fine liners and the alcohol-based markers are in fact compatible. My first impression with the Spectrum Noir brush tips is that they are a lot softer than what I'm used to. They're a little more flexible, if that's the right word. So they're not as firm as the Copic marker ones. Are they difficult to manage? No, it's just something you have to get used to, just like with any other material that you use. Alright, so this is pretty exciting. As you can see, the colors on the actual cap are really similar. I, I don't have space to put them all, but they're really similar to the colors that you get outside. So technically, you wouldn't need to swatch unless you're like me and you really like to organize your stuff. But generally speaking, these colors are really, really close. I am so impressed right now. I did leave the fine liners dry for about 10 minutes and there is some smudging, but do not, do not judge it because here are the microns. And as you can see, I left it dry for about the same amount of time. And yes, there is some smudging. So in theory, you should technically let it dry for longer because it is the same amount of smudging as the microns. These had just a little more time to dry. And as you can see, smudging still occurs. You still have to be careful when you're doing this. You'll gain the technique with time. And now it's time for my equivalents in Copic markers. All right, so here we go back with the Copics. And I'm so used to the brush a lot more, so let's keep going. All right, holy moly, these Spectrum Noirs really completely surprised me. I have to be honest, if you put the Copic markers swatches next to the Spectrum Noir swatches, swatches, I honestly would not be able to tell which one is which. The pigments on the Spectrum Noir are absolutely gorgeous. And so I really feel like these are really good quality items. Again, this is my first experience with Spectrum Noir. I only have two issues with the markers themselves. First is the way that the actual marker is made. I like the shape, but I kept picking up the wrong end. Whereas when I was working with the Copic markers, I immediately knew which one was the brush tip. So identification is a little too subtle on the Spectrum Noirs. Next, the tip of the brush themselves. Copic Markers tip brush is a little more firm, whereas the brush tip on the Spectrum Noir are a little more loose. Not loose, but soft is the word I'm looking for. The biggest perk on the Spectrum Noir, in addition to them being very similar to the Copics, is that it has a bullet and brush nib, as opposed to a chisel and brush nib. So they gain a point in that too. 
So if I were in the market for both of them, they feel pretty equal to me. Now I'm not sure if Spectrum Noir has refills. And the answer is yes. So to me, whichever one you have access to that is the cheapest would definitely be equal in my eyes. So in this Jazzle box, did he make a mistake by not putting Copics instead of Spectrum Noir? The answer is nay. They're pretty equivalent, which is great. I, I, I can't contain this anymore. I really need to try the white marker thing because, because I need to. All right, so we're going to start off with the jelly roll. Just just make a couple of little circles and stripes. And as you can see, it does do its job. It's just slightly on the translucent -y part. Next is this thing. Signal. And let's do the same thing. Oh, that is way juicier. Oh, that is way more opaque. You may not see it, but let's get a little closer. So if you look a little more closely, you can see that the jelly roll is slightly less opaque, whereas the Signo has a bit of a more solid white to it. And I have to admit, the Signo does feel a lot more juicy. So even though the difference is there, it's not dramatic, but it is there and I do see it. And now using the jelly roll, I feel like I'll probably switch to the Signo. Thanks for that, Jazza. Now you're making me doubt all my supplies. Why? Another thing I am so far pretty impressed with is the sketchbook itself. Remember, this is advertised as a sketchbook, not a book for markers. And if you look over here, it did not bleed onto the next page. The colors were contained within the page that we used, even though I was pretty heavy handed on many of the parts. So this is pretty impressive. I am really, really impressed. Can I say the word impressed again? I'm pretty impressed with this booklet. So when it comes to Spectrum Noir, I can't tell the difference between them and their pigment with Copic markers. So they are good quality. I definitely don't think there's a mistake on this end. There is one small thing though. My little notebook, the ribbon is torn. Burb was screeching his little lungs out and he really needed attention, right? So here he is. You happy now? <laughs> All right, let's check out the fabric castells. You done? You done? Okay. The good thing about this box is I feel like I'm happy to have received the uh, polychromos because now it's going to force me to have to try them. The only reason I'm committed to Prismacolors is because I have a set of 150 colors. So technically I feel like I would be cheating on them. But I mean if it shows up at my door. And here they are. Ooh. You know what we have to do? Oh, that smells so good. You know what we have to do? <laughs> Smells like childhood, right? What do you know? You didn't go to school, did you? You're more educated than that. Oh, that's my face! Such abuse, such abuse. Oh, they smell really good. All right, so let's swatch them and I'm going to try the equivalents. I'm a person, you know. I know you don't care, but people have to know. He's still hitting me in the back. You know we can still see you. Come back here. Bring your butt, your pretty feathery butt on my shoulder. Come here. He's so rude. So we're going to start with magenta on both colors, but I'm going to do the Prisma color first because I'm very used to the actual texture. And the colors are not supposed to be equivalent for most of them. I just found magenta, right? And as I'm used to Prisma colors, they're very smooth, very nice. Time for Fabric Castell. Ooh. It's hard to explain, but it feels quite similar to the Prisma colors, but the pigments are a lot darker. So I'm going to press really hard on both of them, just to kind of have an idea on which one has more filler. More filler means that there should be technically, from what I understood from what Ray Dizzle explained, is that there would be a little bit more of the white spots. And as we can see, the Fabricastel wins by a very small, barely noticeable margin of fillers. I'm really glad that I get to try the Fabricastel this way, are you done? You know, every time I ask you, you're done, you lie to me, which means that you hurt a part of my soul. And he's back. Don't, don't smack me. We will call animal control. Some of the grains saw and witnessed. <gasps> that was a hit and run. <laughs> Did you create? 
didn't see that. Let's replay it. He just grabs the tip of my hat and drags it and goes away. You proud of yourself? For shame. For shame! Don't hit me. Oh no! <laughs> So here are the Prisma colors side by side to the Fabric Castell. And I have to admit, the colors are absolutely gorgeous. I still wouldn't be able to tell the difference from one or the other. They have a very nice pen to paper feel. They kind of just want to go on their own. The only colors I... The only colors... You're very interrupty. There are only two colors that I find fall short in terms of the pigments, and that would be the light blue and the light brown. It feels like the pigments on this one are not as strong as all the other colors within that set. But otherwise, I feel like for Prismacolor, they fall short on their light green and their strong red. And when it comes to blending colors, I found it way easier to blend the Prismacolors rather than the Faber-Castells. But that could just be technique. Even though I find that the Faber-Castell colors are way more pigmented and a lot prettier, the Prismacolors just seem to have helped me be able to actually do the blending in a much easier and natural way. I don't know why, but these worked for me a lot easier as a beginner than these ones. I like the color, but the simplicity was easier here. And as promised, here they are on different colored paper. Here's Copic on cardstock. These caps are really annoying. So on cardstock paper, the Spectrum Noirs seem to blend a lot more flawlessly than the Copic markers. Again, I'm a beginner, don't take my word for it. The heck. I am genuinely surprised by these results so far, both on the cardstock and the bird. The blended paper, the Spectrum Noirs seem a lot more cooperative on blending. Part of me is suffering real bad right now because I love Copics and I kind of put them Alright, burb screaming means he was bored, so I had to go give him some snacks to calm him down. His salt levels were a little too high. So as I was saying, even though I'm a beginner and my technique is probably pretty poop, the Spectrum Noirs are a lot more cooperative when it comes to blending. We have one more paper to try, which is the Copic paper. Will Copics blend more smoothly on Copic papers, or will the Spectrum Noirs still win this point? Okay, this is really interesting. Er, me good. I love art and experimenting with different things. As we can see on the cardstock paper, when it comes to blending, the Spectrum Noirs seem to have a smoother transition. When we move into the blended paper, again, the Spectrum Noirs have a smoother transition. I don't know what it is about their own formula, but it's way more beginner friendly than Copic markers. However, there's a really big but. <laughs> When we look at Copic paper, now we're going into Copic's territory. The Copic markers performed way better than they did on any of the other papers. So it feels like the biggest benefit of Copic markers go on Copic papers, whereas Spectrum Noir seems to be adaptive to different types of paper. This is so interesting, and I don't know why I'm dorking out right now, because this is pretty cool. And if you don't find it cool, see what I have here? Why did you make, it, why did you make me break it out? Ooh, this feels really nice. This is actually pretty cute. And time for the eraser. And it erases pretty well, but I don't know what dust-free means. Is this dust-free? I guess because it clumps together, it makes it dust-free. That's, that's going to be my assumption. So with all my materials tested, swatched, and colored, and the thicknesses definitely tried, it is now finally time for my artwork. And so here is my drawing. I got really into it. I usually don't ink my pieces until after I put the colors. So once I had the divisions done, I traced my own drawing twice. And yes, I did use references. I'll leave those in the description box below. And I have to say, I really enjoyed these Spectrum Noirs. The colors are absolutely gorgeous, very vibrant. But I have to admit, one of the biggest annoyances came in the actual shape. I thought the shape was pretty cool at the beginning. But as I kept coloring, I kept opening the 
wrong end. And not just that, but the cap has to go in a very specific way. So I kept bumping that against the other corner, which was the wrong way. At first I was a little worried because I was telling myself there's just no brown and I love my gorgeous browns. But then I remembered that we do have the Fabric Castell, so I went ahead and started to not wear my jacket. Just don't worry, you're going to be able to add more shadows and darkness later on with the colored pencils. I really love the way that this little critter turned out and the compatibility of these Spectrum Noirs with the Fabric Castells were just spot on. I don't usually use colored pencils just because I have a huge variety of Copic markers. In real life, I'm not really that much of a flower person, but if you grains are into flowers, let me know what's your favorite flower. I think mine are probably tulips. So overall, even though I felt like I was lacking colors, I would have to say probably the color I felt like I was missing the most was a lighter blue. Since when I tried to do a lighter blue by using the dark blue with the blender, the color looked a little splotchy. So I definitely had to fill in a whole background with colored pencils and air me good, my fingers were so cramped. The Signo white paint was absolutely wonderful. It's a little too wonderful. What does that mean? It's juicy. So I did find myself dragging some of that white onto other pieces and then I had to patch them up. So be careful with that. And since I will not bore you with the full coloring of the Copics, along with Prismacolors, let's do the doing. So I have to admit, going from the Spectrum Noirs to the Copics, I was very conflicted and very annoyed. The colors weren't blending as crisply as they were with the Spectrum Noir. For some reason, the Copics kept feathering. If you're not sure what feathering is, it's pretty much when you put a drop of ink and it starts spreading further than where you actually put it. So the Copics kept doing that, so they were bleeding onto other colors that I wasn't intending them to do that. Granted, it's not the correct paper for Copic markers, but technically they're not the right paper for Spectrum Noir either. And yet the Spectrum Noir were able to adapt much better than the Copic markers, which is a good thing because Jazza did a good choice, but at the same time, I'm annoyed that Copics are not performing as well as I had hoped. And so here they are side by side. I have to admit, this is where the Jelly Roll really, really disappointed me. Compared to the Signo, the Jelly Roll was just spreading. It wasn't going down evenly. And it's very transparent compared to the Signo. So Jelly Roll really, really disappointed. And as we can see, the Spectrum Noir and Faber-Castell combination was a lot more crisp. The blending just worked so well. Whereas the Copics and Prismacolor, even though they were on the same environment, didn't seem to work really well together. Even when trying to blend the Copic markers, they just kind of feathered as opposed to keep each other company. So what I'm trying to say is, Jazza, what did you do to me? I'm pretty annoyed because I thought I would be like, you know, I'm comparing them. Why did he choose this versus that? But it turned out to be, why did I choose Copic markers and Prismacolors versus Spectrum Noirs? So I'm annoyed at myself. Jazza did a good job, that's what I'm trying to say. Difference between a professional and a noob. You are a noob. Hey Spectrum Noir, if you um, want to send me your full collection of colors, I'll take it. <laughs> Now the biggest question most of you grains have been asking me is does this box hold its worth? Is it in fact worth over a hundred dollars? And as you can see right here, I did a quick calculation of the basic items in this box. That is not counting the fact that the Spectrum Noirs are limited edition curated colors, which means they cost more. And the fact that this box is being put together by a professional team and that shipping is free in the US. The prices that you're seeing that I put on the card are from three different websites because some websites don't carry the other brands, which means technically you would need to pay shipping three times. And so the answer is yes, it does hold its value. If you're someone who's new to Copics and colored pencils, I honestly can't recommend these enough. Part of me wishes that this was offered before I started investing into these other products because I do feel like these are premium products. Remember, these are brand names, not the kinds that you just pick up off of Wish. And hey, you're also supporting a YouTuber that is an awesome and genuine person. If it didn't hold its value, I would let you grains know. And I did tell you the shortcomings of some of the markers, and the eraser is not entirely dust-free, and my ribbon's broken. So salty about that. Give me a new ribbon. 
Oh, and don't forget, we also get a limited edition digitally signed print. So remember the deadline is the 31st, not sponsored, not affiliated. A huge thank you to Jazza for canceling my order and sending me this one. Thank you. Honestly, Jazza really is a really important person in my YouTube life. If it weren't for him, I really would never have realized the things I was doing wrong in 2016, and my channel honestly would have just died then and there. Learning from him has been one of the biggest saviors of my entire YouTube life, I keep saying that. But honestly, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have met so many amazing artists, been able to go to VidCon and talk to so many great people, and have this amazing opportunity at a new adventure in life. So even though I really, in the bottom of my heart, really wanted to be as salty as possible, I ended up being pretty salty on my own supply choices. C'est la vie. What kind of materials do you use most? Out of all the things that you've seen today, let me know in the comment section below which ones you like and why. Thank you so much for watching my little grains. Until then, I will see you in the next video.